Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Brown, Senior Director for Clinical Development at Altimmune. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to tell you about our immunotherapeutic agent, Hep-T-Cell, in the treatment of chronic hepatitis B. And here is our forward-looking disclosure statement. For some background on our company, Altimmune is a clinical stage biotech with a focus on liver and metabolic diseases. As noted here, we have programs studying our glucagon-like peptide and glucagon receptor dual agonist, pemvedutide, for both treatment of NASH and obesity. Today, I'm going to talk about our immunotherapeutic agent, Hep T cell, for treatment of chronic hepatitis B. As is well known to this audience, Current HBV therapeutics generally don't result in a functional cure. Antivirals can prevent disease progression, but rarely clear chronic infection. Newer direct acting antivirals are unlikely to result in immune reactivation alone. The key to functional cure is breaking T cell immune tolerance, which is the goal of immunotherapy, to wake up dormant antigen specific T cells against infection. Unfortunately, prior immunotherapeutic approaches have had limitations that have led to failure. Factors that have contributed to this have been bias towards surface antigen, use of full-length antigens resulting in T-cell responses that are biased towards less conserved domains, as well as weak immunogens. Lastly, nonspecific approaches like checkpoint inhibitors or TLR agonists carry a substantial risk of off-target effects. As I mentioned on the previous slide, surface antigen-based immune stimulation may not be sufficient to elicit a functional cure. It may be that use of core and polymerase antigens as targets will be essential to drive this outcome. In this figure by Labert, we can see that core and polymerase responses contribute a substantial component of the T cell response in acute resolved hepatitis B, the left panel, and also predominate in chronic resolved infection, the right panel. These responses may also facilitate virologic control after nuke withdrawal. So with that background, I'll move on to hep T cell immunotherapeutic technology. Hep T cell is composed of long, 30 to 40 amino acid long peptides selected to contain both CD4 positive and CD8 positive T cell epitopes in order to overcome HLA restriction. The fluorocarbon moiety promotes micelle formation to improve immunogenicity. And we've seen robust immunogenicity in both younger and older age groups with use of the platform. Here is a re-stimulation experiment using PBMC from chronic HBV carriers. PBMC were stimulated with each of the nine individual peptides contained in hep T cell. Their viruses were genotyped, as seen in the figure legend, with responses to each peptide shown based on genotype. Most of the individual peptides cross-react with multiple HBV genotypes so that collectively, multiple peptides cover four predominant HPV genotypes and all other genotypes based on homology. This brings us to our first in human phase one study with hep T cell, which evaluated safety and immunogenicity in subjects with chronic HPV infection. The study population included individuals 18 to 65 years of age who were E antigen negative, had documented HBV for at least two years, had been on tenofovir or entecavir for at least two years, had an HBV DNA level below 50 for at least a year, and had no history of cirrhosis. Subjects received 150 or 500 micrograms of each peptide, each with or without IC50 adjuvant or saline placebo. They received three doses 28 days apart, followed by six months observation. Endpoints included safety, routine labs, adverse events, and injection site reactions, as well as interferon gamma LE spot and quantitative hepatitis B surface antigen. Analysis of safety showed hep T cell 
to be well tolerated. One SAE occurred, which was attributed to infectious colitis. There were no autoimmune events, hepatitis flares, or other trends in AEs observed. Injection site reactions were generally mild to moderate and self-limited. In terms of the immunogenicity, robust T cell responses were observed by interferon gamma T cell LE spot. The left panel depicts the change in T cell responses between baseline and day 85 by treatment group. The magnitude of the response conferred by each peptide is color coded within each bar and shows the dominant response is mounted against the polymerase antigens. The right panel shows the change from baseline over successive administrations with LA spots performed pre-dose, eight days after each dose, and then at day 85, which was four weeks after the third treatment. In both panels, the most robust and broad response is elicited by the low dose peptide plus IC31, the adju adjuvanted group. Shown here on the bar chart, it's the second bar from the, right, from the right, and on the line graph, the dotted red line. Based on the phase one trial, we selected the low dose of 150 micrograms of peptide with IC31 adjuvant for phase two. Our phase two trial currently underway is a multinational study in patients with inactive chronic hepatitis B. As proof of concept, we've selected a subpopulation of CHB patients with hep B surface antigen levels less than 100 international units per milliliter who might demonstrate a response to immunotherapy as a standalone treatment. We've extended treatment from three to six doses in order to induce a virologic response. The study is enrolling 80 subjects, randomized one-to-one, -one, hep T cell or placebo, administered every four weeks for six doses. Follow-up at 48 weeks after the last dose will assess safety and immune durability. The primary efficacy endpoint is the proportion of subjects with a log reduction in hep B surface antigen from baseline at week 24. Secondary endpoints are hepatitis B surface antigen clearance, as well as changes from baseline of other virologic markers. We expect our key data readout to occur in the second half of 2022. Ultimately, we see hep T cell as playing a key role in a combination approach, a strategy where direct acting antivirals suppress HBV DNA and viral antigens to reduce virally mediated immune dysregulation. This treatment would be followed by hep T cell to break T cell tolerance and induce HBV-specific T cell response, leading to functional cure. Thanks again for the opportunity to present our program and evaluation of hep T cell. We look forward to sharing our data and results next year.